I have declared war on weeds, specifically poison ivy and English ivy. So I decided to take the nuclear option and buy a combination spot sprayer and broadcast sprayer. Our property is slowly being taken over by English ivy and poison ivy. And I've been fighting both for a while now with a backpack sprayer, the brush hog, and the landscape rake. But it's not enough and not efficient. After some research, I settled on this 26 gallon North Star spot and broadcast sprayer. North Star has a reputation for making good quality sprayers and they offer this line of ATV sprayers in a variety of models to suit different needs. I chose this ATV broadcast and spot sprayer in part because it looked like it would fit perfectly in the bed of my Polaris Ranger EV and in my tractor carry-all. As of the posting of this video, it can be bought on Amazon or from Northern Tool for $269.99. Shipping is $31.58, bringing the total to $301.57. I have links to both Amazon and Northern Tool in the video description, along with a link to the manual. I'm a big believer in reading a manual of products I'm considering getting whenever possible. What you get for your money is a 26-gallon sprayer with a 2.2-gallon per minute pump that produces up to 70 PSI, runs on 12 volts DC, and requires 8 amps. It can run continuously with a 100% duty cycle. It has a regulator for adjusting the output pressure and a pressure gauge. This model has a two nozzle boom that they say sprays a 6.7 foot swath, but I found that out of the box it was spraying a swath of 10 feet, which was good to see. The nozzles are adjustable, so I think it can spray wider than 10 feet and it can certainly be adjusted to spray narrower. Each boom has a flow control valve for fine control of the amount of spray coming from each nozzle. The spray gun has a maximum vertical spray distance of 19 feet and 30 feet horizontal. The sprayer is 15 inches high, 27.9 inches wide, and 18 inches deep. Finally, it weighs about 50 pounds. It ships in a box that's just big enough for the sprayer and has no extra protection, which is okay except for this side where the pump, regulator, and pressure gauge are. In fact, the pressure gauge was damaged, as you'll see shortly, but it still worked. I found it easiest to turn the box on its end, unscrew the cap, and pull the sprayer out. Since it's going to first be used on my Polaris, I decided to assemble it in the cargo bed. By the way, in case you didn't know, the Ranger's tailgate is easily removed to best accommodate the sprayer, which makes strapping down the tank easy. The rest of the pieces are stored inside the tank and the heavier metal pieces are bubble wrapped. The manual seems to be well detailed for assembly and use. And here's the slightly damaged pressure gauge which I had to bend back into position. It seems to work fine but I may request a replacement. Assembly is straightforward. First, the handles go on. They attach with 5 16 inch bolts requiring a half inch wrench or socket. I'm using an impact wrench only for speed, being careful not to over tighten. The threads in the tank are plastic and would strip out easily. This last one is in tight quarters, so I use a half inch ratchet wrench. Next, the spray gun clips go on with Phillips head screws. Again, not too tight followed by the hose wrap. Then I route the hose under the spray gun clips, put the hose clamp on the end of the hose. I take the slack out of the clamp first, then slide the hose onto the regulator output and tighten the clamp firmly with a screwdriver. The spray gun snaps into the clips, though not easily the first time. After the clips stretch a bit, it gets much easier. Next, the boom tank mounts are attached. I was pleasantly surprised at the heavy gauge steel used for them, as well as the rest of the boom hardware. They are attached using 5 16 inch bolts and washers requiring a half inch wrench.
The vertical boom mounts are attached with generous sized locking knobs. Installing the boom assemblies requires 5 16 inch carriage bolts and locking knobs. As mentioned in the spec, each boom has a flow control valve to control the amount of spray coming from each nozzle. Then the boom hose threads onto the boom connection port. I use some pliers to tighten it just a bit more. The manual says the booms should be 21 inches from the ground and lo and behold they are. You'd think this thing was made for a Polaris. The sprayer comes with an 8-foot electrical cord with a built-in on-off switch and uses a standard 12-volt automotive connector in case you need to add an extension to it. The connector plugs into the back of the sprayer. Then I connect the alligator clips to the positive and negative terminals of one of my Ranger's batteries. So let's see, have I forgotten anything? That's it, thank you. I need to strap it down. It so happens that this is easy to do with some lock and ride anchors and ratchet straps. The rear hooks conveniently hook into the steel bed support channel. We'll put a few gallons in here and put it through its paces and see how it does. Okay, since the camera wasn't recording when I first tested it, you're joining a little bit late, so I apologize for that. Uh, when I first turned it on, I discovered that it was broadcasting about 10 feet and it was uh, rated for 6.7. But I'm actually glad to see that, that I can actually spread it to 10 feet if I want to be spraying, say, out in the pastures or something. But for trails, I really do want it to be six or seven feet. So it turns out these little heads are uh, rotatable so you can spread it out or bring it in a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it on so maybe you can see. It's showing 40 PSI. Now I've got it down to 20. So the pressure also determines the rate at which it goes out. And this valve cuts off the boom. Okay, the pressure regulator's working. I don't like that it cycles like that to manage it, but it is what it is. I would turn it off in between, but let's see what we can do here. I later found the cause of the cycling was a small leak around the pressure gauge threads, which I fixed by replacing the Teflon tape around the threads. Nice. Okay. Gives a good stream. You're not going to see this, I'll just have to report it. It's throwing it maybe 20 feet, which is fine on a, on a stream. We interrupt this program to inform you that the drain plug was cross-threaded when it came, so it was leaking. So I had to kind of stop the process and back it off and put it back on, but it stopped leaking, so that's good. Had me worried there for a minute. So the next day I mix up 26 gallons of a strong batch of Roundup to try on the trails. The width looks perfect for the trails, covering everything on the trails and a little bit to the sides. The specs didn't mention the sprayer could make rainbows. Anyway, the sunlight shows the spray pattern. Normally a speed of four to five miles an hour is optimal for this sprayer. When I come to an area with no vegetation, I can turn it on and off as needed.
I've come to an area where I need the spray gun. So I switch the valve from the boom to the spray gun. I have the nozzle set for a wide spray pattern here. By the way, the plant in the wire cage is a baby big leaf magnolia. We have three planted along the creek. The cages keep the critters from eating the leaves. Obviously, I have to be careful not to get roundup on them. Now you get a much better view of how well the gun works. I set the stream for a longer range. That's great, I can fine tune the range and spread as needed. Here's a big patch of poison ivy that needs some TLC. I think the sprayer and I are going to get along just fine. When this thing gets down to about two gallons, uh, or even a little bit before, it is not reliable uh, for spraying because you're sloshing around in the in the draw tube, which is over here in this corner. Uh, you know, sucks air, so it becomes spotty on its spraying. So it looks like it needs to probably be above eight gallons or so. To be uh, to be reliable. Something else I discovered was that this cap, uh, which goes on on the drain plug, is the same size as a regular garden hose. So I decided to take that off and put this valve on here. Um, that's going to make it easier to drain this because I've still got perfectly good uh, Roundup mix in here, uh, and I want to in fact drain it into my backpack sprayer where I can use the rest of that and then this is ready to go into storage so let's see how that goes looks like that's going to work out really well awesome besides draining the tank before putting it in storage I also drain the spray gun and hose Also, I disconnect the boom hose so it can drain as well. It's a good idea to rinse the intake filter after each use. Of course, the boom supports come off easily for storage. The best place to store the locking knobs is on the bolts. I use a cable manager to bundle up the electrical cable and strap it to the gun hose on the top of the sprayer. Then it's ready to go onto the shelf until next time. If you're storing a sprayer in a place that can freeze, follow the manual's instructions for using RV antifreeze to protect the sprayer from freeze damage. Other than the pressure gauge being banged up a little bit and leaking around it, which I fixed with a little Teflon tape, and the drain plug being cross-threaded when I got it, which I was easy enough to fix, it appears to be in sound shape, not leaking anywhere, and working very well. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. And if you want to know when I post new videos, click that little bell. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.